The Hoosiers made their statement against Purdue on Saturday. They still have a lot left to prove, though, tonight against Rutgers. You are Locked On Hoosiers, your daily podcast on the Indiana Hoosiers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, everybody? Welcome into another episode of Locked on Hoosiers, your one and only daily one-stop shop for everything IU athletics. Host as always, Jacob Rude. want to thank you guys for making us your first listen every single day. I want to thank FanDuel for bringing you this episode. They're the official sports book of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on today to get started. Who just came away with a big win on Saturday? Hope you guys celebrated accordingly. Hope you guys talked some trash. Let all the Purdue fans in your life know about it. Now, that being said, they play the probably the second best team in the Big Ten tonight in Rutgers, a team who has absolutely had Indiana's number in a recent season. So Immediately bouncing back with another big game. It might not have the rivalry tag attached to it. This is still a an important matchup. I was trying to think of the right word for it. A, I, I think this matchup will reveal a lot about Indiana. And it, if you think back to the last game, before we do that, let's just dive into the details. Because I do want to talk about that last game, but I, I don't want to get ahead of myself. Let's do our, our run through. You guys know IU versus Rutgers tonight, 630 Assembly Hall. It'll be on Big Ten Network. But the last meeting between these two teams this season was a telling contest. And it was the first time Indiana had lost a game. It was the first time Indiana had looked bad to be honest uh, it, it, that was a beatdown Rutgers handed Indiana it kickstarted the really bad five weeks that Indiana had from that Rutgers loss through the Penn State loss now obviously there were a lot of injuries that played into that and those all are important factors but Injuries were not the reason Indiana lost that game against Rutgers. There was an effort and intensity level that Rutgers played with that Indiana did not. We'll talk about that a little bit when we kind of preview the matchup specifically in the next segment, but Indiana was not up to the task in that game. And that it, like I said, it, it led to a number of games where it was kind of some similar vibes. Indiana wasn't up to the task to start against Arizona, against Kansas, uh, that Penn State game, the Northwestern game. It's a It was a recurring trend this season. They've gotten away from that over the last three, almost four weeks now. But that Rutgers game was revealing in the uh, matchup back on December 3rd. A lot has changed since December 3rd and tonight, but will the result be any different? Is Indiana going to be able to get this monkey off their back? Look, Rutgers has Indiana's number, full stop. Indiana won the first six games against Rutgers that they played dating back to 1980. Rutgers won two games in 2018-2019. IU won in 2019, and they have not won since. Six straight losses. And here's your trivia for the day. Who can you name any of the three leading scorers the last time Indiana beat Rutgers? You can pause if you want. I'm going to give you a hint here in a second. The game was March 10th, 2019 uh, in Assembly Hall. 89-73 was the final. Three players were in double figures. Jawan Morgan had 25. Romeo Lankford had 20, and Devontae Green had 16. If I were a betting man, I'd imagine you guys probably knew Romeo and or Jawan. 
But that is a long time since Indiana last beat Rutgers. Nobody on the team that played in that game has is on the team now. So nobody on this roster has beaten Rutgers. I, I, the only person that might have been on that roster is Ray Thompson. He was on that roster. That was his freshman season, but obviously he had injuries and whatnot he dealt with that year. So he did not play in that game. He's the only one on the roster that has even experienced beating Rutgers, which is wild. This is a monkey on their back. This is a, a matchup that is going to determine a lot in the Big Ten standings as well. It, right now, if you look at the standings, or at least heading into Monday night's games, I haven't looked at how things played out on Monday. There was a six-way tie. I had to make sure my math was correct. Six-way tie for third place in the Big Ten. Purdue is in first. Rutgers is in second. IU is one of those six teams in third. Tiebreakers are going to matter. <laughs> and having or, or splitting the head-to-head -head against Rutgers very much could matter come Big Ten tournament time. So in that regard, this game is very important. I, I think this game is important. Beyond that, though, this is – Indiana ha hasn't handled – I don't want to say they haven't handled success very well. They just haven't been able to or come back after big wins. Let's look at examples. Last year, they have the big win over Purdue. They come back and lay that ugly, ugly egg against Michigan – on that Sunday afternoon game where Michigan hit everything and Indiana was miles off the pace. You could even look, it would be a little bit harsh just because of the seedings, but IU has the big win against Wyoming and they look totally off of it against St. Mary's. I'm not willing to write that one in, in as much. That was a good St. Mary's team, but look at this year. They beat North Carolina. They come back and lose that Rutgers game. It's not often that IU wins a big game and then comes back and answers the bell again the next game. They've done it a little bit in this current stretch. That Illinois game was a, a pretty big win, and then they come back against Michigan State and win at home. But this is going to be telling in a lot of ways. You, you beat Purdue. You have the crown jewel of your tournament resume now. Now are you going to come back? and lose to Rutgers and have some of the same questions and not really be certain what this team is, or are you going to beat Rutgers and really start to assert yourself that this team is good? This team, that Maryland game was kind of a blip. Maryland is apparently like 2015 Kentucky at home or whatever, and that was you're writing that off. Because if you bounce back from that game and beat Purdue and Rutgers in back-to-back -back games, even if it's at home, those are statement wins. So big chance for Indiana in this one to make a name and really make a stamp, I think, on this kind of home stretch of the season that we've grown, we've matured, this is who we are now. That's putting a lot into this game, I realize, but I think this is a very important game to know, so that we know what Indiana is going to be moving forward. Ken Palm has Indiana by two points with a 58% win probability. That is one of six wins they predict the rest of the way. One of the losses is a, a Michigan State is favored by one in East Lansing, and the other one's Purdue on the road, and good Lord, that game is going to be Something else now, but IU is predicted to win this one by Ken Palm. FanDuel has IU favored by a little bit more than that even. Uh, three and a half point favorites against Rutgers, minus 176 to win. So this one, I, I like the, hmm, I don't know, actually. I, I'll have to think about it, but while I'm doing that, let's talk about Built Bar. The one of our longtime hosts, if you guys are looking for that delicious treat, you guys know all about Built Bar. We talk about them all the time. We just got through the holidays. A lot of people's goal is to eat healthier this year. And if that's the case, 
Built Bars are absolutely perfect for you because healthy is actually tasty. They have all these amazing flavors, 100% real chocolate, so you're not sacrificing anything there. Churro, peanut butter brownie, coconut almond, cookies and cream, whatever it is, they have it for you guys. And yet somehow, it's only 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, and 17 grams of protein. The best part now is that you don't even have to order it built and wait for your order to arrive. You just have to head over to your nearest Walmart, head to your nearest Sam's Club. They are in stock there. Four bar boxes at Walmart, 13 bar boxes at Sam's Club. Head on over today, get some built bars, stick to your New Year's resolution, and still enjoy some tasty food. And you can thank me later. Let's uh, dive into a little bit more about this Rutgers team and this matchup specifically. Before we do that, I want to thank you guys for making us your first listen every single day. Make sure you also check out Locked On College Basketball. Uh, They are everything you need to know about college basketball in one place. I tuned into the episode for Monday. They talked a little bit about IU and Purdue. It was a lot more about Purdue because I am going to go on the show uh, for Thursday's episode to talk about the Hoosiers. So make sure you guys are subscribed. You can check it, uh, check out Thursday's episode. Hopefully it's on the back of back-to-back wins. But we'll be on there later this week to talk to them. It's available on YouTube wherever you get podcasts. On that note, I was on Tuesday's episode of Locked on Big Ten this is an exciting week, guys. We're going to be all over the place. We are like we were on Locked on Big Ten talking about the IU-Purdue game. We'll be on Locked on College Basketball. We have a guest coming in that you guys are familiar with for the women's game on Thursday. It's an exciting week. Make sure you guys are subscribed wherever you are listening to us at or watching us at on YouTube. We will be live after tonight's game as well. So be sure to... Be subscribed and following us on Twitter so that you can see that as well and come join in on either wallowing in pity together or celebrating back-to-back really big wins. I'm not sure which way it's going to go right now. There's a couple interesting things about this Rutgers team. Let's do the Ken Palm rundown first. Uh, We'll try something here. For those watching on YouTube, you're going to get a little bit of a – insight that hopefully makes it a little bit easier than me just spewing numbers at you uh, when I talk about these teams. This is Ken Palm's scouting report for Rutgers. Conference only, this is a bad offense. They rank ninth in overall efficiency, but as you tell, they rank first in defensive efficiency. What makes them strong defensively? Well, they don't allow teams to make shots, which is always pretty good. They create lots of turnovers, which I'm sure you guys remember from the last game. They struggle rebounding the ball, but they're going to defend well inside the arc. And those turnovers that we mentioned, steal percentage means they're live ball turnovers, which are the worst kind to give up. Not really a lot of weaknesses outside of giving up offensive rebounds. Outside of that, there is one weakness that we're going to talk about in a second. But outside of that, this team's pretty sound fundamentally defensively. Offensively, though, they have struggled. Ninth overall, 10th in effective field goal, 11th in turnover. So they're going to turn the ball over a lot. This could be a back and forth game in that regard, which uh, they're 10th in tempo. So that it probably isn't going to be a back and forth game necessarily. And IU doesn't want to play that, though it could be interesting to see how things go with. Uh, Hopefully another excited crowd. They're third in offensive rebound percentage. So while they give up a lot of offensive rebounds, they also grab a lot of offensive rebounds. My guess would be that has more to do with their philosophy of getting back on defense or not getting back on defense, I should say, and crashing the offensive glass. Three-point percentage, they are not very good at it. Uh, They aren't good inside the arc. Non-steal turnovers, so dead ball turnovers are almost dead last. And just 
generally not a good offensive team. You can see down here, they're not going to attempt a lot of three pointers. They are going to assist a lot of buckets though. They're first in assist per field goals made. So a team that's coming into this game, 16 and seven, eight and four overall, some highs, some lows. They beat IU, they beat Purdue. Uh, they have a win over Maryland. They have a win over Ohio state, but they also lost to Iowa at home. Lost to Michigan State, lost to Iowa away. Iowa is their kryptonite. So, again, not a necessarily a consistent team, but it certainly seems like they get up for games against Indiana. If you take a look at this graph, this is an interesting point I want to make. This is uh, at by Taylor L on Twitter formerly with rivals with IDS News. Uh, he had an interesting graphic and some stats. Uh, he said, for those not watching, curious if IU basketball takes more threes tomorrow. Rutgers is 265th in three-point defense on the road. They are first in total points allowed via threes in the Big Ten. IU is 21 of 41 from Rutgers' weakest spot, which is the left wing. Uh, they IU ranks does rank 331st in threes rate, which has always kind of been the thing with Indiana. They make a, a lot of them. They just, just don't take them. They don't have high volume three point shooters. They did take them against Rutgers last time, 25 uh, threes against Rutgers. They, the only other time they've done that since then is the, uh, it's December 10th, which, which is, I think the game, so, uh, um, it was a tenth was Arizona, which they were playing from behind and had to shoot three pointers. So, it's going to be interesting to see what IU's approach is in this contest. It, you can take a look at the graph. It is uh, three pointers against or percentage against uh, relative to defensive rating. If I get rid of my name on here and I blow this up bigger, you guys will see it. But Rutgers right here or right there, kind of top right quadrant by themselves. I can't move the mouse or it moves the picture. But you guys can see Rutgers there. I'm not sure where Indiana is. I would imagine they're in this kind of mess in the middle, uh, if anywhere. But this is a Rutgers team that allows teams to shoot well from the three-point stripe on the road that's not necessarily on the road for them i should say not necessarily a strength for indiana but it could be and especially at home role players tend to play better so maybe big nights are in store for miller cop for tamar bates maybe jalen hood shafino has another ohio state game stuff like that uh, perhaps those types of role players could step up, knock down some threes and take advantage of what I, you couldn't take advantage of against Rutgers in the first game. You guys are, are largely aware of the players. We can run through them real quick. Clifford Amarui, 13 and 10 per night, the leading score, leading rebounder for Rutgers. Again, kind of had his way a little bit in the first game. Offensive rebounds were obviously the, the big problem in that first game. That's effort more than anything. And that was really, that really typified what IU didn't have in that contest was any level of effort or energy. Uh, so Amori had only had six points and nine rebounds. He did only play 20 minutes. I believe he got, yeah, he was in foul trouble. Uh, it was Caleb McConnell that had all the rebounds that I remember 16 and 10, five on each end, offensive and defensive. So, uh, Andre Hyatt had 11 in that game. Derek Simpson had 14. Cam Spencer is uh, second on the team in scoring at 13 points. So it's not a team that necessarily scores at a high rate. Uh, they're ninth in the Big Ten in points per game, but they're second in points per allowed. So uh, points allowed per game, I should say. So this could be a rock fight, but I think one of the other big differences between this game and the previous game is where Trace Jackson Davis is. He very clearly had a lot of issues with his back at that point uh, earlier in the season. 
he looks 100% healthy. Something very close to it at the very at the very least right now. So that Trace Jackson Davis makes a big difference versus the one the Hoosiers had against Rutgers in the first game. Let's talk some polls. The Hoosiers, both Hoosiers team up. The men's team, turns out, beating Purdue is better than losing to Maryland or more impactful, and the Hoosiers actually moved up in the polls. The women's team is the highest they have ever been. We'll talk about both those here in just a minute. I told you I was going to think on FanDuel. I, I'm feeling myself. I think Indiana has a response in them. This team does feel different than previous teams. I don't know that I would take Indiana minus three and a half, but I think I would take Indiana minus 176 on the money line. Maybe toss in a couple same game parlay props with Trace Jackson Davis, who I think will have a big game. If anybody's going to respond to what happened earlier in the season, it'll be him. If you guys have not joined already, now is the perfect time to get started on FanDuel. We're really excited about having them because they're the number one sports book in America. If you haven't joined, it's even better because if you download FanDuel now, you can get started on tonight's game and get all set for Super Bowl 57 with a no sweat first bet. You'll get up to $3,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet does not win. FanDuel lets you bet on everything, whether it's the money line, whether it's the point spread, whether it's the pr player props like we just mentioned. Maybe you think Trace is going to have a double-double and I is going to win the game. You can parlay that together. The FanDuel Sportsbook app is safe. It's easy. It's secure. And best of all, you can get paid your winnings instantly. As soon as the game's over and you can, uh, you're can, you celebrating the Hoosiers winning, Trace having 20 and 20, you can head on over to FanDuel and cash out right away. Join FanDuel today at FanDuel.com slash locked on to claim that no sweat first bet on Super Bowl 57. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NFL. A couple of interesting things happen in the men's poll. For one, Indiana moved up three spots in the AP poll. They moved up four spots in the coaches poll. They're ranked 18th in both of them. A little surprising. I didn't really think about what was going to happen with the poll. I just, the Maryland loss was so frustrating that I just didn't even, I almost didn't even consider IU as like a ranked team heading into Saturday's game because in my mind, they weren't going to be. They lost to Maryland. They were going to fall out. So it makes sense that beating Purdue, considering where Purdue was ranked, carries more weight and than losing to Maryland and hell. The, as we said last week, the, the top 25 is an absolute mess week in and week out. So a host of teams lost the last weekend makes sense. The Hoosiers moved up. I was, I just wasn't really expecting it. So it's number 18 IU. The other interesting thing is Purdue did not drop. <laughs> They're still number one. They're not unanimous number one anymore. They were unanimous number one heading into the week, uh, but they are still, I want, I don't want to say safely one vote. Really? There were 15 first place votes thir uh, for Purdue 13 for Houston in the coaches poll. It was a little more uh, definitive in the AP poll, but I was a little surprised Purdue didn't drop at all. I will say pleasantly surprised. I think there's a lot of overreaction to poll voters on losses at times, especially Purdue's been really good this year. And, and I think they're very clearly one of the three best teams, maybe four best teams in the country. So I didn't, they shouldn't have overreacted necessarily. I was, just, I'm just kind of surprised when those things happen. Rutgers is ranked number 24 in the AP poll. So, It'll be a second straight ranked matchup in this one. They're not ranked in the uh, USA Today poll. They were in the others receiving votes. They would have come in at 28th. So depending on which poll you really want to use, uh, the AP poll is typically the one I default to. This will be another ranked matchup for Indiana. 
The more fun development is over in the women's poll where Indiana jumped up to number two in the country. Number two, Indiana Hoosiers, my oh my. It comes because Stanford lost. Uh, They fell to Washington uh, last week. So the Hoosiers simply jumped LSU. I'm not sure what in the last week changed for voters. I knew and we said last week it was really close. It's they didn't I mean they won at Minnesota and Purdue last week. The Purdue win was fun and exciting because it's a rival, but winning at Purdue I, look, I'm not going to complain, and it's still razor thin. Six points separate IU and LSU. But IU jumps to number two. LSU to is number three. UConn, they lost to South Carolina and moved up in the polls. I'm not somebody that goes after AP voters and complains about it. There was a voter. If you guys want to go look on my Twitter, which you can see right there, you'll see the picture. Not going to put them on blast publicly. There was a voter who had UConn jump three spots, including over Indiana, after losing to South Carolina. You can have a valiant loss. You don't jump up after losing a game, especially when IU and LSU didn't lose. So, very silly. UConn moves up a spot somehow. Iowa is fifth. Iowa should be fourth. Stanford drops to sixth, Utah seventh. Maryland is up to eighth. There's been a lot of focus on IU and Iowa. Maryland has kind of sneakily got its act together. That win against them early in the season looks really good for the Hoosiers. Michigan's up to 12th. They jumped six spots. Ohio State is a mess and yet is still 13th. That feels like it's doing them a bit of a favor. They lost handily to Maryland this week, 90 to 54. They have lost four of their last five games. It's a bit of a mess over in Columbus right now with the women's team. That is all of the Big Ten teams that are ranked right now, though. Illinois is just outside at 27. Uh, So the Hoosiers, though, jump up to number two. It's going to be a top five showdown on Thursday. I mentioned we're going to have a guest, Wyatt Crozier, who I talked about in, or who we had on, excuse me. I talk about him all the time. Does tremendous work covering women's basketball in the Big Ten. We had him on before the season, I believe, uh, or it might have been during the season. Regardless, he's going to come on later this week to talk, uh, preview the IU-Iowa game. This is a big one. Earnestly, I think this is probably the biggest game in IU women's basketball program history. Certainly regular season. The only argument I think you could make is the Elite Eight game against NC State a couple of years ago. Outside of that, this if we're talking regular season, definitively the biggest game in IU women's basketball program history. So we're going we're gonna to talk about this all week. Get to Assembly Hall if you're anywhere near there. That place deserves to be sold out. Make sure you're supporting the Hoosiers in every way possible in this one. It's going to be a fun one to watch later this week. We'll have plenty of coverage of that. We'll be live tonight after the IU Rutgers men's game, so be sure you're subscribed. Also, make sure your second listen is Locked On College Basketball. Isaac Shade, Andy Patton, bring you everything you need to know on and off the court, plus hear from big-name experts, coaches, and players throughout the basketball landscape. Locked On College Basketball, available on YouTube, wherever you guys get podcasts. Follow us on Twitter so you can see when we go live. Subscribe on YouTube, same thing. Rate and review, all that great stuff. It's a fun week, guys. It's going to be awesome. I'm excited. I hope you're excited. Hope the Hoosiers come away victorious tonight. But most importantly, and as always, LEO.